Hi, this is Greg with Lion Quest Fitness. A couple of months ago, I had uh, a commenter ask me about maybe elaborating more on opportunity cost, you know, risk analysis, as far as your decision making when you had to use deadly force. So anyway, let's talk about that very subject. It's like driving defensively, defensing driving. You're paying attention, you know, which way to turn, how fast to go, you know, whether to stop, whether to back up and doing so and watching out for everyone else that may be doing something entirely different. The whole goal is to get home safely without causing an accident, without being in an accident. This is a method of weighing out opportunity cost in your decision and how you drive. Now, what are the opportunity costs and risk in carrying a firearm? For self-protection. You know, first thing that you need to remember is that the use of a firearm is deadly force. Whether you just present that firearm or whether you actually fire that firearm, that is considered deadly force that can only be used when your life or the life of someone else is in immediate danger from someone who has the ability to do them great bodily harm and you feel, due to the circumstances, that you or that person's life or well-being is in jeopardy. Something else to keep in the back of your mind. Criminals, predators have no problem lying against you as far as what may or did not happen. Secondly, uh, many people in our society who border on being sociopathic have little compunction in... Uh, doing the same thing. They will, they will lie through their teeth and make themselves believe their lies, you know, because he was the aggressor or she was the aggressor. They're the ones that started this whole thing and just, you know, you can read between the lines. That's something else to take into consideration. And that leads to running afoul of the legal system. You may have some uh, prosecutor who's wanting to make a name for himself, who's going to prosecute you to the extent of the law. You may wind up in a civil suit from the family of a, of a predator because he, he was just a, a, a simple guy and he was going back to school and he was a good person and that, per, that, that, that person should have never have taken the law into their own hands. So there might be a legal battle, and that could cost in the tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. These are always things to consider. It could be uh, pilloried by the media. You know, homeowner kills 13-year-old in home invasion, never regarding or putting in the, their article that the 13-year-old was the size of a full-grown man and was holding a knife at one of your children's throat. You know, you see how this can go. You know, there's always narratives that the media likes to jump on. There's also the stigma of having shot or, or even killed somebody in self-defense. A friend of mine, and, and I do call him a friend, I think a lot of this gentleman, he's older than me. Uh, he was in law enforcement for many decades, and he's been long since retired. But during the course of his career, he was involved in, in two shootings where uh, a perpetrator was uh, deleted, I guess would be a polite way of saying it. And even to this day, people still remind him about that. You know, they don't talk about him as being the nice guy or he's the, uh, you know, former, did a lot of good things when he was a law enforcement officer. But no, no, no. They introduce him, even many years later, as, hey, this is my friend. He killed somebody in the line of duty. You know, it's uh, what he calls the mark of Cain. People never want to let you forget what you've done. And then last but not least, the, the, your own costs, your own ethics, your own moral values. You know, I don't like the idea of taking someone else's life. 
I do not like the idea of hurting someone. I don't like violence, believe it or not. But you know, the bottom line is, if you are threatened, if you feel like your life or someone else is in danger, and you can justify those things, then I, I train, you know, I tr still train martial arts. You know, I still exercise. I still train with my firearm so that hopefully I will never have to use those skills. But those skills are there if I do need to use them. So these are all opportunity costs as far as using a defensive firearm. So now, in the second part, I'm going to do another video, and I'll put it out this weekend as well, is what can you do, how can you train your decision making, and what steps can you take to avoid these negative outcomes? And this is Greg with Lion Quest Fitness. Thank you.